Healthcare is a quite a uh, conservative industry, so if we can allow or give some kind of policy helping us to adopt some uh, first adoption or pilot case in the uh, Greater Bay Area, that will be a very, very uh, advantageous to us. Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode of Smart Talk. My name is Stefano. Before starting our show, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Today, I'm very honored to have with me three guests. Uh, my name is Andy Wong. I'm the head of innovation and technology from Invest Hong Kong. My name is Justin from um, Chance Technologies. I, I am the CEO of the company. Um, so we do a low-cost and portable medical imaging device that is targeted for home use as well as hospital and clinical use. Hi, I'm Alvin. I'm uh, from Akezo I'm the CEO of Akezo we are a health tech startup focused in uh, community healthcare. COVID-19 has called healthcare systems and organizations worldwide to adopt digital healthcare solutions rapidly. Are we seeing this happening in Hong Kong as well? COVID-19 is actually accelerated mm -hmm. to driving more adoption of the digital um, technologies. In Hong Kong, we do see the uh, adoption of uh, telemedicine, particularly for teleconsultation uh, from the hospital. Uh, it can be enabled by the 5G, particularly in Hong Kong. So some of the what we call smart hospital is using the digital um, technology to do a telehealth kind of operation for the patient and also consultation by the doctor as well. A doctor can sit in the office, can be monitored for different uh, couple of, of patients together. Definitely, this uh, digital means is the front door for uh, opening the door for the more uh, people who can receive the medical consultation or treatment. And you summed it up pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to share one or two stories. Um, telemedicine, obviously, is one of the main things that we see in here. But uh, we also certainly see um, a lot of uh, assistance required for more than just telemedicine, because consultation is a very important aspect of it. But for it to go further, you do need a bit of hardware support. So all those step-by-step um, -step transformation from um, person-to-person -person devices to slightly remote devices. Those transformations, we're seeing quite a bit of more interest in Hong Kong as well. The most important thing that we see the gap is a more requirement from the uh, organizational-centric solution, which is a hospital-centric solution, to get into more um, patient-centric or community-centric solution, which is we see the needs. Especially in the COVID time, we try to uh, empower the patient to take care of themselves at home or in the community, which is try to avoid the burden in hospital. In terms of foreign investment, do you see any medical and healthcare industry trends under the pandemic? We do receive a lot of inquiry, want to come to Hong Kong to invest in Hong Kong. But unfortunately, because of the coast of the border, so they cannot fly over to Hong Kong because of the Zoom or other, other technologies, yes. right? So we can have a lot of meeting, getting more easy to set up the meeting with our client uh, overseas. Uh, we see a lot of interest coming, uh, want to come to Hong Kong to look for the investment opportunity. For the healthcare, I would say that compared with other industry, it is more conservative. So because they want to make sure everything is safe, everything is secure before they deploy the solution. Are there any promising advanced technologies that your companies are, are currently working on? Now, what I'll do is probably a very short demo to yeah. talk about uh, how this works. At the back of it, we do have a port here that would connect to a band that does measurement in real time. So for example, if I want to look at my lung functionalities, I will wear a belt around here, mm -hmm. connect to this, and then I can see in the phone um, a, a list of instructions that I had to follow to do some dynamic imaging. It could be put in a hospital where you put in bedside, where um, um, you can monitor patients around the clock as well, so that you can have a lot more direct intervention. Albert, can you share your story about like, your startup? So our startup is uh, really uh, come from uh, our personal story, a family story. My grandma is quite lucky. Uh, she, uh, she got uh, five kids, so that's, that's why they can rotate to take care of my, my grandma. We use a WhatsApp to communicate, say that oh, my, my grandma is going for dialysis. Another thing is quite interesting, my, my family, we have two doctors, two nurses and one pharmacy. So you can see that how complicated in the WhatsApp discussion. So that's why, oh, can we do something which is build a solution, how we take care of the patient, like how we take care of them in the hospital, which is the uh, patient chart type. And so that's why there's the beginning of our solution coming into the market. The trend right now is moving, is, is, is always like this, is uh, from the pre prevention to a diagnostic, to treatment and also rehabilitation. So because we want to control the whole cycle, particularly when we talk to the pharmaceutical company, they are not just focusing on the treatment, right? but they also want to focus on the early stage the detection. 
the telco, for example, you, you link up with the telco so that they can uh, provide all those uh, home monitoring systems to prevent something uh, really bad happening, right? In terms of investment, medical and healthcare are relatively less popular among all other industries because of their longer investment return and cycle. So what is your comment on this and why? Definitely, the um, biomedical is talking about quite a long um, journey, maybe up to 10 years particularly in the drug development. We have a very good uh, funding support um, from the public, which is the stock exchange. We have the chapter, what we call 18A, which is specific for the investment on the biotechnical industry. So 18A is whenever you have passed the FDA uh, phase one clinical trial with the good result, then it's eligible to apply for that uh, IPO funding. So it will shorten the time for the company to receive a much financial support. And are you planning to list also your startups as well? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that, that's the goal, <laughs> yes. Um, we do see a sort of a mixed view, in, um, well, at least from my personal experience, um, for sort of uh, biomedical technologies. So we're sort of in between. We're not as long as drugs, but at the same time, being a semi-medical device, we do need a different timeline as well. So um, locally, there are not a lot of um, appetite this sort of area simply because um, there are different opportunities in here. Definitely, Hong Kong, I think for us now, is a very good test bed because uh, we've been leveraged a lot of different kind of funding. Like some of the projects we deploy with the NGOs, so we can use uh, the public sector trial scheme, which is mutual benefit for the uh, organization, which they no need to uh, really uh, spend extra money, which is subsidized by the government, to enjoy the early adoption of our solutions. And what kind of support do you, do you need? There certainly needs to be a bit more of um, support in terms of uh, getting things happening because biomedical is already a very long journey. And uh, there are obviously certain balances that we need to have, have that sort of check inside, but at the same time, um, having different departments involved and uh, speeding up a bit of that process would certainly help us get to the first step. Healthcare is so very conservative. They really want to uh, have some reference for us to get into the market. The main challenge is how we get into our first customer. Uh, we are uh, lucky that we work with Cyberport. Uh, we work with a different kind of government funding, which help us to step into this uh, market more easily. And we will see career inclination related to medical fields or overseas medical talents back to Hong Kong in terms of uh, talent training. Because my role is um, promoting Hong Kong. Yes. So I feel that I'm quite doing a very easy job because uh, we have a, a two very good medical school in Hong Kong, yeah. uh, University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong. And then we have very good uh, clinical trial hub in Hong Kong. We do have a lot of very well-known doctor. So there's a, 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 a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies want to leverage their network, have the patient to do a uh, study the, the drugs in here. We do see quite a lot of uh, new interest inside this sort of medical area. But having said that, um, the local local talents we see from, from this area is um, possibly not as proportionally as much in other areas as well. So in our office, uh, we, have, we have eight, nine nationalities all over the world. Quite a lot of those are educated in Hong Kong. Mm. So um, we do provide a very, very good education system. But um, in terms of the attraction to, to the local talents mm -hmm. into this sort of engineering field, into this medical field, there is still some room for improvement. So. And how do you foresee the future collaboration between Hong Kong and the GBA area? It's happening. So the infrastructure, because uh, Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area is just nearby, but um, in order to make the uh, what we call one hour or two hour uh, living circle, so we do have the um, bridges built and then the high speed railway. It make it more easier to commute between the uh, two different uh, uh, sides. Government just got a new policy that uh, if uh, they, for the GB uh, business, mm -hmm. if you require to employ Hong Kong uh, graduate, mm -hmm. you can get extra subsidy up to 10,000 per month, right? Yes, yeah. yes, so, yes. So that's why the, we can see that the government mm -hmm. is also uh, encouraging that kind of uh, interaction. As you mentioned, because the graduate, right, um, if you feel that there's an opportunity in GBA, so then you can apply the funding from the government, subsidies of the salary, and then work in Shenzhen, and then exper experience yourself. And also there's a, uh, for the professional people, the lawyer and also the, the tax professional uh, or the accountant, then if we become graduate, we will recognize your degree or your professionalism. As I mentioned, healthcare is a quite a uh, conservative industry. So if we can allow or give some kind of policy helping us to adopt some uh, first adoption or pilot case in uh, Greater Bay Area, that will be a very, very uh, advantage to us. One of the things that the government could consider, so things like RTH, 
we're targeted at uh, only for, for part of the PhDs and part of its, its undergrad masters. We only target local schools. And for top mainland schools, they do have very good engineering candidates as well. That, that are quite Hong Kong focused. So um, building on that um, platform, we could expand it into including more schools, more talent. We both mentioned about the public sector child scheme. If we extend that, it's not only public sector child, it's a Greater Bay Area child scheme. That will be also very uh, significant to us. And this is the end of our show. I want to remind to anybody who does not agree with today's opinion or with our previous opinion to challenge us and take part of our show. So thanks again to our guest. And we have a slogan. We say, through dots, we connect. Can you say for us? Through, through dots, dots, we, we connect. connect.